What I'm doing at the moment is working with a metabolite produced by a microorganism that shows a very nice potential in treating pancreatic cancer. It's only really been in the last 20 years that microbiome research has become a, a discipline in its own right. And it's really just in the last few years that medtech and biotech companies have been able to find practical applications for that research. Now, one of the interesting things about this microbiome explosion is that it's happened in a few geographical clusters. Medicon Valley is one of those, so we've come here to find out more. Medicon Valley is a life sciences cluster spanning eastern Denmark and southern Sweden. It's a fairly small area geographically, but it contains 1,150 companies, 9 universities and 65,000 people working in the life sciences sector. We're starting our journey by meeting Susanna Briggs Pedersen. She's a professor of immunology at the Technical University of Denmark and her work involves researching interactions between the immune system and the human microbiome. Is there any particular area where you think that your microbiome research has made a, an especially large impact so far? Um, at the moment, I think we are just at the boundaries where we, we are starting to make impact. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, we, we have just identified specific bacteria in early life of children that when they, when they have them, then they have lower risk of development of, of food allergies. Where do you get the, the biological samples that you need to be able to do your research? Um, it's in collaboration with the hospital doctors, but also from the biobanks that we have here in uh, yeah, next to Copenhagen. We have a national biobank, so you can track uh, diseases and all, or, all sorts of things uh, in, in a long-term perspective. Through someone's whole lifetime, yeah. uh, potentially. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, one of the illnesses where microbiome research could be crucial is asthma. So that's why we're on our way across the city to meet with Jakob Stockholm. He's a senior researcher at COPSAC. So, what exactly is COPSAC? Yeah, so COPSAC is the Copenhagen Prospective Studies of Asthma in Childhood. So that means that we have two different cohorts. Okay. And they have been followed from pregnancy and then throughout their lives very closely to monitor who will be healthy, who will be sick, and then collect a lot of material. Mm -hmm. We have gut samples, we have skin samples, we have airway samples, we have actually also dust samples. Um, and maternal vaginal samples from pregnancy. So okay. quite many different microbiomes that you can actually study. All 700 of these, uh, of these participants, you're monitoring them regularly, they come here exactly. for check-ins so, to, to find so out. We actually have a very, very high follow-up. Uh, at six years of age, we had a follow-up of 96% actually in the cohorts and also here at the, the 18 years, which is the last visit so far in the, the old cohort, actually we have more than 90% coming into the clinics 18 years after they were born. Why do you think that is? I think actually it's a, they, they like to volunteer in, in the Scandinavian region. There are a willingness to participate from, uh, from parents. They want to actually help people, help research, um, which is very difficult in many other countries. So, cohort studies in Copenhagen, and there's a lot of cohort studies happening here in Sweden as well. We've come over to talk to Daniel Agart at Lund University's Clinical Research Centre. So within the Clinical Research Centre, there's more than one research group based here. Oh yes, the, the biggest cohort study is of course uh, the TEDDY study, right. which kind of is an international study involving six clinical sites to find uh, what causes type 1 diabetes. So mm -hmm. we are enrolling children that were HLA genotyped, which means that they, were, they had their genetic risk determined at birth. And so we genotyped 425,000 between 2001 and 2004 to just get those with the high risk genes for type okay. 1 diabetes. Right. So eventually we ended up in with 21,000 children. 21,000, yeah. wow. Yeah, and 8,667 gave consent to a very ambitious protocol of a 15 year follow up. So as of we are now approaching the end, we have had overall in Teddy 200,000 clinical visits. From these 200,000 clinical visits, we have 200,000 stool samples. And we have 4 million blood samples. So it's a huge study. So as we have now collected all the samples, any researchers in, in the world can actually apply request to do an ancillary study. 
Of course, there's a lot more to Medicon Valley than research. It's also home to a thriving startup culture. So that's why I'm on my way now to meet someone who's doing something really interesting and building on that research and doing it in a way that lets consumers find out a lot more about their own microbiomes. We are a, a direct-to-consumer microbiome analysis company. So the user can get their microbiome mapped and then we give personalized diet feedback on how to improve their gut microbiome. But we have a very strong uh, microbiome field in, in, the, in the greater Copenhagen area. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of science going on and uh, the entrepreneurship is, is rising. So we've spoken to researchers about asthma, diabetes and other lifestyle related diseases. And there's even more illnesses that are being targeted by scientific research here. So has there been any particular breakthroughs that have emerged from the cohort studies here at uh, Skåne University Hospitals? There are, for instance, statins, which lower your blood cholesterol, mm -hmm. which have been found in studies to, to have uh, people treated a lower incidence of cancer. Mm -hmm. And that has been actually been confirmed for some cancers that if you're treated for that cancer, your relapse could be reduced by treating with these cholesterol lowering agents. There will be many researchers who say that, oh, well, what about my study? Okay, but that, sure. that's just one example. Well, you know, the thing that really jumps out to me is the amount of resources that are here. That's true of the facilities and also the, the qualified people that are here. But most of all, I think that's true of data. And by that I mean biobanks, repositories, biological samples, and other kind of materials. And all that is underpinned by the civil registration systems here, which makes that information all the more useful, all the more powerful. A lot of that has been made possible by the commitment of some of the people we've talked to. And I think they've really helped build a platform for a lot of the breakthroughs that have been made. And with that platform, I think that a lot of the breakthroughs are going to continue into the future. And it's quite a nice place to be as well. <laughs> <laughs>